We'll start the discussion today with um, the difference between film criticism and advertising and some of the places that they uh, intersect and collide. Um, so we'll start with, uh, with Marjorie. So talk, about, talk to us about what a film critic is and how that differs from what the folks in marketing do. Um, well, I don't know what the folks in marketing actually do, never having done that. I've kind of been on the receiving end. As a critic, I go to movies and write about them in my paper. I, I, I mean, not to be totally flip about this thing, but the topic of this panel and my basic reaction is, duh. <laughs> I, I, you know, I guess I'm a critic, not a publicist, and maybe it's the, as the only, well, maybe uh, Todd, I, I mean, primary print critic here, um, I, I think that the, this confusion is something that has arisen more in the internet age. How do you feel that the internet has changed the way those two worlds intersect? I don't think it's any blurrier than it's ever been. I was just reading this really interesting article about uh, about uh, Pauline Kael, and uh, one of the stories in it was about her at Paul Schrader's house at a party, and uh, her talking to John Millions, who she had uh, ripped apart in some review, and the idea that Pauline Kael is, you know, one of the great uh, film critic icons and, and, and one of the people we look at, and there she is, you know, drinking it up at Paul Schrader's house. Um, uh, Pauline Kael is often brought into uh, to look at films in progress and sort of give her uh, advice uh, on edits as they went along, films that she later on review. I think that there's a fallacy based on a lack of understanding of the historical context of film criticism uh, that makes it happen. I mean, Andrew Saris, another, one of the other great film critics, uh, you know, was friends with a lot of the people that he wrote about. And the, it's, it's just a natural function of being someone who loves film, who's involved in film, and who is in film at that level. You're going to meet the people that you uh, write about and the people that you like and the people whose work you like, you're going to they're gonna like you back. I mean, that's just sort of, uh, that's, that's how creative types go. You know, if you say something nice about somebody, they're gonna, they're gonna find themselves liking you uh, a, a whole bunch. Uh, I'm inclined to sort of almost disagree with the, the, the whole, the hypothesis of, the, of this, and uh, in in that I do feel like everything that we do to a certain extent is advertising. You, it's, it's an advocacy for this entire industry. Even if we're writing negative reviews of films, that is publicizing a movie in some way, shape, or form. Um, you know, I, uh, to me, like, I always feel like it comes down to, like, what your personal sort of boundaries are, uh, your sort of sense of professional ethics or, or what you feel is appropriate to do or where you draw the line. But, um, you know, uh, I think if you, depending on where you maintain your sense of integrity, uh, everything that you do essentially is still going to be um, in some way promoting the industry. I mean, 95% of the access we get is not because the, the studios are just benevolent, um, you know, and, and contacting us out of the goodness of their hearts. It's because they want to promote their, promote their movies and, um, and having us write about them or interview people or see them and write about them is all in the service of getting other people to see them and spend money on them. You know, if I could piggyback on that, I had mentioned earlier that you can't my experience, make a living as a critic, and I don't, I don't have to. I have a, a real job that pays the rent when my newspaper laid me off. So I'm a critic in my spare time, and as a result, I don't have to deal with the marketing and publicity folks, and I specifically avoid them, if at all possible, because it just, to me, starts to feel weirder and weirder, the tighter I get with them. Like, I come out of the screenings, and they, they hand me that piece of paper, and they want me to write something good. And I just don't want to if it's not a good movie. So, so I find, don't. I don't. I, I say it was in focus, and then I just hand it back to them. Uh, there's, there's nothing you can do. Um, but it feels like some folks love those pieces of paper that I see I'm in these screenings with. They, they want to write something, a phrase they don't want to ever say because it would get on a poster. And I feel that some folks that I go to screenings with call that relationship in a weird way, and I, I just don't want to at all. So let's talk a little bit about balancing the roles, especially now in the, in the internet era where uh, whether you call yourself a blogger, critic, journalist, you're not just reviewing movies anymore. There are junkets, there are interviews, there are set visits, and some of these things come with a price tag for the studio. And, and some of these things 
um, involved being flown to exotic locations and fed delicious buffets of food. <laughs> That's why I got. Um, but how do how do you balance credibility to your audience? Well, I think that it starts with a clear editorial um, definition of what you what the site is intending to achieve. And some sites are, are much more about like sort of covering everything. Some, th some sites are very purposefully like keeping themselves separate, as you were talking about. But I think in terms of per like, like an individual, um, you know, like I think you, you have to make decisions based on what you feel is professionally ethical or appropriate. And because one person, because I've always, I've always said that, um, you know, there are people who will give a movie a good review because they got free popcorn and validated parking. And so they don't need to be flown to, 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 to another country. They don't need to be, you know, they don't need to talk to a star in order to, to love a movie. So it, the onus is on the individual, not on like meeting some generalized perception of what constitutes integrity, because you're never going to live up to that in the eyes of all different kinds of people. Because there are people who, as you said, they, they, want, to, they want to be completely separate and quote unquote objective coming at movies. And it, that's not, Possible, but but you know, I, I having having done many junkets, many set visits, um, I, you know, I can uh, I can say with 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 all sincerity that you know I don't think that my um, while while my interest in movies may have been affected, my reaction to them in the in the long run or my ability to do my job because I was at the Four Seasons when I interviewed a person um, did not make me like. Uh, like something better or worse. Well, I also want to jump in really quickly with the, another historical note, which is that there's this sort of belief that, oh, n well, now these things happen. I mean, junkets have been happening forever. They used to be a lot better, in fact. And so were set visits. Roger Ebert was going on set visits in the 70s. I mean, yeah. this isn't, this isn't a, a, a new thing. Um, so I think it's important to keep that perspective. The other thing is, I, I mean, I think Todd's right. As long as your editorial voice is strong, <coughs> um, I've been on a lot of set. I've been on a lot of sets in my time, and I've given bad reviews to movies that I've been on the set of. And in fact, I've actually given worse reviews to movies that I've been on the set of, due to the fact that being on the set and listening to these dipshits talk about the movie they were trying to make, and then seeing the absolute piece of junk that they ended up making, actually probably hurt my opinion of the film. You know what I mean? If you have a director going, "We're going to do this and this and this and this, this next generation thing," and then you go see the movie and you're like, "Man, there's none of that here," uh, you know, that actually hurts my opinion. Um, but on the other hand, also sometimes you can get a lot of really great insight. I think that as a film critic, honestly, I think a film critic should know every single part of the process of movie making. I think a film critic should have been on sets and seen what it, what, 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 how it works. Because I think that just sitting there and going, I like that, I don't like that, is pointless. I think that understanding the process and understanding uh, the craft is really, really important. At the Chronicle, we, we have a policy that we try to follow. It's not always possible sometimes in, in actuality. But of have, dividing up the chores of doing the interviews and doing the reviews, always finding that once you do have a personal conversation with someone, once you've been given access, once once you've been allowed into that click, in a way that something changes a little bit. It, it may be just a half a star, it, your mood about it changes, whatever. so the reviewer, and the interviewer, we try to always keep it separate. It doesn't always work in practice. I completely agree. You, you mentioned it earlier, Neil, like uh, when a critic does this or that, but the critic and the reporter, ideally, it's different duties. Almost it needs to be different people, if at all possible.